Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Uh, let's solve this one another problem from uh, Hibbler statics. So, the problem says that the chandelier is supported by three chains which are concurrent at point O. If the force in each chain has a magnitude of 60 pound, express each force as a Cartesian vector and determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant. So, this chandelier is supported by these three chains and the forces in each the magnitude of each force is 60 pounds right. So, all of these uh, magnitudes are equal right and as we can see that uh, this point A, B and C they are located uh, at equal angles right that is 120, 120, 120. So, if we look into this chandelier from the top. So, then we will be able to see this circle like this right and we will be able to see this point A, B and C and the y axis and the x axis is and the z axis is, is out of the screen right. So, this angle is 120, this angle is 120 and this angle is 120 and the radius of uh, this circle is 4 feet right. So, we can write that this is 4, this is 4 and this is 4. So, what we need to do is that we need to find the resultant of these three forces. So, for that we need to find the Cartesian vectors F A, F B and F C. So, I will write F A. So, F A is acting from O to A. So, this means that we need to write the magnitude multiply by the position vector from uh, the unit vector from O to A. So, this is the unit vector from O to A and we can write this unit vector from O to A as a position vector from O to A divided by its magnitude from O to A and similarly the magnitude is given which is 60 pounds. So, I will write 60. So, this is magnitude times the unit vector. So, now we can write that this is 60 and we can find the position vector by moving from point O and we will travel along the x, y and z axis and then we will reach that point A. So, the position vector from O to A. So, we need to move 6 feet in the negative k direction. So, I will write minus 6 k and then once we once I reach here then I need to move this much distance along the x axis and as we can see that this whole angle is 120 degree and the angle between these two axes is 90. So, 90 minus 120. So, this angle is 30 right. So, now to reach that point A along the x axis is we need to move this much distance and this distance is 4 cos of 30. So, 4 cos of 30. So, from here we need to move 4 cos of 30 distance along the x axis. So, I will write 4 cos of 30 i. And once I reach here then I need to move in the in the negative y direction and that distance is 4 sin of 30 in the negative j direction. So, I will write minus 4 sin of 30 j. So, this is the position vector from O to A. So, we can write that uh, 4 cos of 30 is 3.464. I will write it here since we are going to use it again and again. So, 4 cos of 30 is 3.464 and 4 sin of 30 is 2. So, 4 cos of 30 is 3.464 and this is 2 and then we can find its magnitude by taking the squares of each component. So, this is 3.464 square plus 2 square plus 6 square and then we need to take the square root. So, we can find this magnitude this is 3.464 square plus 2 square plus 6 square and this gives me 7.211. So, the magnitude is 7.211. So, now we can write this F A. So, F A Cartesian vector is 60 divided by 7.211. 60 divided by that answer. This is 8.32. So, this ratio gives me 8.32 multiply by the position vector 3.464 minus 2j and minus 6k. So, now if I multiply this, so 8.32 multiply by 3.464. So, this gives me 28.82 
28.82i minus this multiply by 2 so this is 16.64j and minus in this multiply by 6 so this is 49.92 49.92 k and this will be in pounds so this is f a similarly we can find f b so f b is equal to its magnitude times the unit vector from o to b so from o to b we can write the unit vector is r o b the position vector divided by its magnitude so again we can repeat that same method so this is 60 and then now we need to reach that point b along the x y and z axis is from point o so from point o again we need to move six feet in the negative case i will write minus six k and once i reach here once i reach here i need to move in the negative x direction i need to move in this direction and again this is cost component of this radius and this is that 30 degree so we need to move uh, 4 cos of 30 degrees in the negative i direction and then we need to move uh, 4 sin of 30 in the negative j direction so i will write minus 4 sin of 30 j and again 4 cos of 30 is 3.464 so this is 3.464 and this is 2 so again if you find the magnitude so again we need to take the squares of each component and then we need to take the square root so we will have that same magnitude so this is 7.211 and 60 divided by 7.211 will be that same 8.32 value so fb 8.32 and 8.32 into all those same values but only the signs are different right so this this was plus so we will have that same vector but we will look for these signs now this and this and this so again 8.32 multiply by 3.464 so we will have that same 28.82 but this time we will have minus sign right since this vector uh, this force fb from o to b is going in the negative x direction so we have minus sign here so this is minus 28.82 i then minus again this ratio multiplied by 2 will give us 16.64 so 16.64 in the negative j and then we will have that same value 49.92 minus 49.92 K. So this is FB. Now we will find FC. So FC and again it is magnitude time its unit vector and FC is acting from O to C. So I will write ROC divided by its magnitude and again we have that 60 and we can write the position vector from O to C. So to reach that point C we need to move 6 feet in the negative K direction. So I will write minus 6K and then we need to move 4 feet in the uh, positive j direction so plus 4 j and there is no need to move in the x direction so this is the position vector from o to c and its magnitude will be 4 square plus 6 square under the square root so this is uh, 4 square plus 6 square so the magnitude is 7.211 again we have that same magnitude and 60 divided by this answer will give us that uh, 8.32 so fc is again 8.32 into 4j minus 6k and if i multiply this so 8.32 multiply by 4 so this is 33.28 j minus 8.32 into 6 so this is 49.92 k and this is fc now we need to find the resultant and its magnitude and 
and its coordinate direction angle. So we need to add the resultant force will be equal to F A plus F B plus F C. So we need to add the corresponding components, right? So this will cancel out 28.82 minus 28.82 and here we have 0 I. So the X component will cancel out. So we will have 0 I. Similarly, uh, the J component will add up, right? This is minus 16.64 minus 16.64 plus uh, again this is minus 16.64 and the j component of fc is 33.28 so this is plus 33.28 so this becomes 0 as well so plus 0 j and we, we can add k terms right so this is minus 49.92 so this is minus so we need to multiply it by 3 right so uh, 49.92 multiply by 3 so this is 149 so we have minus 149.76 k so this is the resultant vector now we need to find its magnitude so its magnitude will be equal to the magnitude of this component so the fr magnitude will be equal to 0 square plus 0 square plus 149.76 square under the square root so we will get that same 149.76 pounds value this is 149.76 so this is the magnitude of the resultant now we need to find the coordinate direction angle so we can represent this fr in terms of the coordinate direction angle so this will be uh, fr times cos of alpha plus fr fr is the magnitude right so f this is magnitude fr sine of beta uh, this is cos of beta sorry this is cos of beta j plus fr cos of gamma k Again, we can compare this, so we can say that fr cos of alpha is 0, and we want to find alpha, so we need to divide both sides by fr, so this will be 0 divided by fr, so this will become 0, and again we can take cos inverse, so alpha will be equal to cos inverse 0 by anything becomes 0, so cos inverse 0 is 90 degrees, right, so you people can check it cos inverse 0 is 90 degrees so alpha is 90 degrees similarly and this is also equal to 0 so from this by repeating the same method beta will be also equal to 90 degrees and similarly if we compare this so this will be f r cos of gamma equal to minus 149.76 and if we divide both side by f r so f r is 149 0.76 and if we take cos inverse this will become minus 1 right so gamma will be equal to cos inverse minus 1 so cos inverse minus 1 so this gives us 180 degrees so gamma is 180 degrees so this means that the resultant is making 90 degrees with the x-axis 90 degrees with the y-axis with the positive x-axis with the positive y-axis and 180 degrees with the z axis is with the positive z axis so from all this information this means that the resultant force is acting in the negative z direction since it has only one component in the negative k direction right as we can see and this is that fr which has only one component and that component is acting in the negative z direction so this is the solution of uh, this problem i hope you people would have understood this problem solution Kindly subscribe my channel to have such more problem solutions. Also like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from engineering statics by Hepler.